We're about to start on confidence intervals for sigma squared, but first we need to touch on a few things from probability, a few um, preliminary facts about chi-squared random variables. So the first theorem is if we have a standard normal random variable, then if we square it, we'll end up with a chi-squared random variable with one degree of freedom. And we'll prove this theorem in a second. Then our second theorem is suppose that we have a bunch of chi-squared random variables. Each one has its own number of degrees of freedom pi. Then if we take the sum of those chi-squared random variables, then we'll end up with a chi-squared random variable. And to get the degrees of freedom, all we have to do is just sum up all those degrees of freedom. All right, so if we wanted to prove this one, it would be pretty straightforward. Um, I would recommend using an MG moment generating function. So if we have the MGF of a sum of random variables, that's the same thing as the product of the MGFs, and then we'll do that for these chi-squared random variables, and then we'll see that the MGF is a chi-squared random variable with the sum of the degrees of freedom. So that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so um, in this video, we're going to concentrate on this first theorem, proving this first theorem. Okay, so if we want to prove this first theorem, it's pretty much just a transformation. So we know that we have a standard normal random variable, and then we are squaring it. So the transformation that we're going to use is z squared. So if we want, we could define a new random variable y, so that y equals z squared. Okay, so since y equals z squared, then we want to see that the PDF of y is just the PDF of a chi-squared random variable with one degree of freedom. So our usual technique for doing, for getting PDFs is first get the CDF, then take the derivative, and then we'll end up with the PDF. So let's go ahead and start with that CDF for y. So the CDF for y, that's just the probability that y is less than or equal to some value that we plug in here, little y. But we know what y is, capital Y. Capital Y is z squared, where z is a standard normal random variable. So let's go ahead and make that substitution. So if z squared is less than or equal to y, then that means that just z must be between negative at, uh, square root of y and positive square root of y. All right, so, so far we have for the CDF is the probability that our standard normal random variable is between negative absolute value, sorry, negative square root of y and positive square root of y. All right. So we know a common trick whenever we have a random variable bounded between two things, we can just split it up into the difference. So this is the same thing as the probability that our standard normal is less than or equal to the square root of y minus the probability that our standard normal is less than the negative of our squ square root of y. Okay. So now we can recognize this is the PDF for z with square root of y plugged in. This is the PDF for z with the value negative square root of y plugged in. So we can just rewrite it that way. All right, but we know what the PDF for z is because z is a standard normal. Okay, so we have now the, P the CDF for y, and we said that we need to take the derivative of it to find the um, PDF for y. So let's go ahead and take that derivative. And so we know that the CDF for y looks like this. So really when we're taking the derivative of the CDF for y, we're taking the derivative of the CDF for z with square root of y plugged in minus the CDF for z with negative square root of y plugged in. Okay. So this is a super general form so far for what our PDF for y is. We need to work with it a little bit more to get to that final stage where we can say this is a chi-squared random variable. All right, so if we move up here, I've just rewritten this here. Here's our PDF for y. It's the derivative of this minus the derivative of that. Okay, so let's actually plug in what the CDF for a standard normal random variable is. So we have Actually, we'll do that in one more second. So if we take the derivative of this first piece, then we know that, okay, by the chain rule, we have to take the derivative of square root of y. So we end up with 1 over 2 times 
also in the denominator, square root of y. And then we end up with the derivative of our CDF for z. So that's our PDF for z with still square root of y plugged in. OK, so we've gotten that first piece. Now we need to get this second piece here. Similar process we have to use the chain rule. So we have to take the derivative of this inner piece, which is negative square root of y. So since we had a negative here and a negative here, those will cancel out, give us a positive. And so we end up with 1 over 2 square root of y times the PDF for z with negative square root of y plugged in. All right, so now we can actually use the PDF for a standard normal random variable. So we just write down the PDF for a standard normal random variable, and wherever we see our random variable, we're going to plug in square root of y for the first one, and then for the second one, we're going to plug in negative square root of y. All right, so we've done that here, and so we end up with two pieces that look pretty much the same. And so then we can just add those together, and we get 1 over the square root of 2 pi, and then 1 over square root of y, times e to the negative y over 2. And then we need to think about, OK, what values of y is this good for? Well, for z, it covered the whole real line. And y equals z squared, so that means this is good for any values of y greater than um, or equal to 0. All right, so now we can go ahead and look at that, compare it to what the chi-squared PDF looks like, and we'll see, yes, this definitely is a chi-squared PDF with one degree of freedom. So we're good.